cone air filters, probably one of the first upgrades many of us make to improving the performance of our Audi TT Mark 1s. But have you considered the other factors that could be affecting its performance? Hopefully I'll cover these in this video and maybe give you some ideas how you can improve your cone filter in the Audi TT Mark 1. Hi all, Andy here and welcome back to the channel. So the cone filter, what is it doing? And why is it not on the original Audi TT Mark 1? Well, you probably know if you own an original OEM Mark 1, there's normally a square air box right here that contains an air filter. Now that air filter is doing an adequate job for the car, but some believe it is restricting the airflow slightly and by removing it and fitting this performance air filter, you're gonna get more air to the turbo intake pipe, which will hopefully give a much cleaner journey for the air. Now these cone filters are available from between 50 and 150 pounds from different manufacturers and also different lengths. This one is made by Ram Air. It was already on the car when I bought the car, so it's an upgrade that's been previously added. By allowing the car to breathe easier, you should technically get more power out of the car. However, there are some factors to consider if you're looking at a cone filter. And one of the benefits could also be one of the drawbacks. With this filter, you can see it's completely exposed to the engine bay. For those of you that don't understand the principles of the turbo car and how it works, the colder the air you can get to the combustion chamber, the better. So really we want as cold air traveling through the system as possible to the inlet manifold so it can create the most explosive spark which is probably why your car drives much better on a cold morning than it does in hot conditions so to combat this ram air and many of the other cone filter manufacturers have added this what i can only class as a bit of an effort of a heat shield and the idea is that's keeping the warm air from the engine away from this cone filter but as you can see, it's not flush with the bonnet, so there's no way to air seal this from the engine. So heat is gonna bleed over into this area and the cone filter will suck in hot air. Not only that, this heat shield seems to be made out of metal. And my thoughts are, it's gonna heat up from the radiated heat from the engine and actually act as a radiator towards the cone filter and warm up the air further. Now this is a relatively cheap upgrade for the Mark I to give you some more performance, but it is gonna be hampered slightly by the warmth of the air entering this filter, in my opinion. In fact, if you are looking for a massive increase in horsepower, you are likely to be disappointed. A great whoosh sound and more turbo noise from the engine breathing easier, yes, and a faster response time as the engine airflow restriction is improved, but more actual power, I'm not so sure. Sounds great and looks nice in the engine bay though. So what can you do to improve the coldness of the air getting into the engine? Well, you could do something to combat the warm air getting through and I'm gonna talk about that right now. But I'm also going to talk about the journey of the air from entering the cone filter around the engine bay and finally ending up in your inlet manifold. Now air is gonna to enter to your cone filter here in the engine bay. So the first intake of air is gonna come in here. Of course, the filter is sponge covered and it is gonna remove any of the debris and also allow cold air and clean air to enter through the turbo intake pipe. Now the journey from the cone filter allows the air to go past the MAF, which is working out the volume of air mix ratio and once it comes past here, it enters the turbo intake pipe or tip. As you can see, this is an aftermarket one and a forge one, and I think it is also oversized to allow more air to flow down it. Now from here, the air is gonna go down the back of the engine bay towards the turbo. The turbine is gonna compress the air and speed it up and force it down the charge pipe. Now, if you own a 225, you will recognize this charge pipe. This is only found on the 225 and not on the 180. And from there, the air will be traveling down this rubber pipe at the front corner on the driver's side into the side mount intercooler. 
And it's here on the standard cars that you will find the air is being cooled. So the warm air from the turbo is passing down this pipe here and then entering the top of the intercooler in the wing. The air then passes through this radiator and is cooled by the free flowing air coming in from outside. The air then passes out of the bottom of the intercooler and along this hard pipe across the front of the engine, under the radiator and enters a second intercooler here on the passenger side at the bottom. The air again flows through this radiator and comes out at the top of the intercooler along this plastic pipe into this rubber S-bend and then it enters the inlet manifold just here. So your air from the turbo is going through two radiators or intercoolers either side of the car to get maximum cooling efficiency before it enters the inlet manifold. However, don't forget, with that larger cone filter that's probably breathing in warm air, it's gonna be taking a lot more cooling to get the air down to temperature. But there could be another solution on the cards, and that would involve installing a new intercooler onto the car, a front mount intercooler. And that would go here, where the radiator would normally be, sitting in front, and to fit a front mount intercooler, you'd actually be doing away with this side mount intercooler on the driver's side, and this intercooler on the passenger side. Instead, what you would have is a much larger single unit just here. That would allow a bigger volume of air to be cooled than the two side mount intercoolers. And the journey for the air if we look at the screen here, air is leaving from the turbo side here and coming back into the engine here. Instead, there would be a pipe that would come all the way down on either side and into either end of a front mount intercooler here at the front. Because that's exposed to the air that's passing through it from the front of the car, it's gonna get maximum cooling efficiency. To fit a front mount intercooler, it is gonna take some fabrication of the existing bumper because there's just not enough room behind it. So to undertake that job, it is quite involved and you do really need to know what you're doing because you are gonna be hacking away at the plastic behind it. So not just a simple bolt on part. You are also going to have to disconnect some of the quite significant pipe work for the air supply on the engine. I did also think if you had lost the side mount intercooler on the passenger side, is it possible to take this cone filter and somehow fit it into the passenger wing somewhere? Because without that intercooler there, there's gonna be more space. That way it's gonna be exposed to cold air much lower down away from the engine than in its normal location. There may be a reason why you can't do that because of its location to the MAF and the turbo intake pipe. So I'm not 100% sure on that, but it does make sense that we get as cold air as possible into this cone filter. So is the cone filter worth having on a Mark 1 TT? And is this rather poxy heat shield doing any job? Well, I'll leave that for you to decide. I think it probably is gonna allow more unrestricted air into the turbo intake pipe, but at the sacrifice by supplying warmer air to that. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's video, and if you have, then please do give it a thumbs up, and also think about subscribing to my channel if you have not already done so, where you'll find a whole host of content on the Audi TT Mark I, and of course, the dismantling and rebuilding of this project Mark I Audi TT. As always, thanks for watching. See you soon. Take care.